the outlines of a future resources industry shaped by the global pandemic are starting to emerge, but we still will need to pay for it. By way of brief introduction, my name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I am a creator of Digital Ready Talent. I help oil and gas companies raise the caliber, capacity, and capability of their organizations to deal with digital uh, transformation. Here's how you can reach me. We will look back on 2020 as a pivotal time in the recent history of the planet, likely more so than 9-11, the Great Financial Crisis, and Arab Spring. We will reflect on our pre-pandemic world, how we used our time and resources during the outbreak, and how our world was transformed in the recovery and beyond. In my case, I used the time to gain 10 pounds, and I learned to cut my own hair. Some of the early adaptations others have put into place to cope with the pandemic may become entrenched habits, although personally, I'll be glad to stop washing my own steering wheel, swabbing my credit cards after I go out, and laundering my own paper money. Some features of life that we have been forced to jettison will likely be discarded forever, like handshakes and kissing Europeans. But much of what we already had in place will endure. It reminds me of the lessons that I have passed on to others many times. Take a close-up view of things distant and a distant view of things up close. I think this was from Sun Tzu. In any case, this is a very useful a proverb in uncertain times because it helps provide a lens into our future. For me, the pandemic reminds me how much of our world that is durable and will remain regardless of the course of the outbreak. After the pandemic, there will still be 1.2 billion gasoline cars on the roads looking for car accidents. There will still be 300 million diesel heavy trucks looking for truck stops. There will still be 53,000 merchant and military ships looking for safe harbors, and dozens of cruise ships still incubating viruses while at anchor near Miami. The jury is still out on the 30,000 aircraft that are waiting it out in a desert somewhere. Oh, and there will be plastic. Lots and lots of plastic. Some demand for some things will be permanently destroyed. That is to be expected. But industry will be dependent on all of these existing tools and assets to bring supply chains back to life, to kickstart commerce, and to restore what has fallen away. The world's energy delivery systems have been remarkably resilient throughout the pandemic, which stands in sharp contrast to the fragility of the healthcare system, the collapse of the retail sector, the gutting of the tourism sector, and the stalling of the services sector. Asset-centric businesses are built to last, and frankly, during a pandemic, society is most grateful that that is the case, but not so all these other sectors that are so dependent on labor. They've been increasingly displaced by digital. To put the virus back in its box, society has reluctantly embraced social distancing which has by extension thrown a number of deeply held commercial and social orthodoxies onto the temporary discard pile. Of course, some of these orthodoxies will snap back into place, but others are looking less tenable. First, office closures have put paid to the orthodoxy that industry professionals must be physically close to get work done. Of course, physical plant workers will still need to be in proximity to the plant, and much of their work requires more than one worker for safe execution. But the office towers in many cities, forced shut in the pandemic, may not reopen, along with downtown parking, inner city restaurants and services, and putting municipal tax revenues at risk. Teleworking has been around for a decade or more, but has never really taken off because it required a tipping point. In oil and gas, with its top-down, command and control, siloed organization structures, hardwired with budget systems, it takes but one or two powerful people in the organization to insist that teleworking is unsuitable, and that was that. The orthodoxy has been shown incorrect. Teleworking seems to work just fine when everybody does it. A few very specific industry roles have their own dedicated office facilities. Oil traders in particular have operated out of purpose-built trading floors, not during the pandemic. And yet, trade is still being negotiated, financed, and delivered. Some artifacts of the office environment, including the use of paper documents, inner office mail, signatures with real ink, might linger on but become increasingly untenable with this newly distributed workforce. 
Another orthodoxy is the imperative of face-to-face -face collaboration sessions with key suppliers using whiteboards for problem solving. In-person meetings are over, but the general working problems of the industry still go on. New equipment doesn't work properly. Business systems have to adapt to new rules. Ongoing compliance projects need to hit their deadlines. Problems are still being solved. Industry relies on a steady level of international travel because of distributed assets and their need for human care. Some, if not all, of that travel is now impossible. Imagine a critical piece of processing equipment imported from South Korea, installed in a U.S. plant, and in need of urgent attention from a team of senior Korean engineers. If they even set foot in the U.S., they are subject to 14 days quarantine, and on return to Korea, they quarantine for another 14 days. Industrial sales have always involved lots of in-person meetings, coffee discussions, site visits, practical demos, and collaborations. The sales model is now broken. Industry is quite accustomed to cutting back purchasing activity in response to cyclical changes in commodity prices, but they do eventually return to the market. And it's not yet clear if sellers will replace their sales models with alternatives to the in-person experience. Creating new ways of working reminds me of a quote from Milton Friedman. Only in a crisis, actual or perceived, produces real change. When that crisis occurs, the actions that are taken depend on the ideas that are lying around. Friedman goes on to say that only in a crisis can the politically impossible become the politically inevitable. Teleworking and teleconferencing on a grand scale were politically impossible in December 2019 and are now inevitable for any business that aims to keep plugging away during the pandemic. Here are some other ideas that are lying around that could get new life. Centralized workers in an office can more readily cope with poor quality data. Go visit a colleague and talk it out. Bosses can easily delegate the problem away. But remote workers, at-home bosses, and machine-based business models incur a heavy price for poor data quality. Productivity suffers. Expect bosses to expect better quality data in their Zoom meetings, many of which will be recorded for prosperity and available for future litigators. Physical distancing and office closures that send people home require that their work tools be portable and anywhere ready. I remember during SARS how important it was to equip everyone with laptops so that they were not stranded without work tools. Work tools include data and information. Expect to see workers encouraged to keep their technology with them at all times. Business designs that are dependent on people working in close, forced, close contact are now in peril. Workers are going to be justifiably alarmed at the prospect of working conditions dependent on crowded, close, and continued confinement once the full impact of the pandemic is revealed. Industry is stuck with lots of rigid technologies that will remain human-centric for operations and maintenance, but machines that can run those safely, reliably, and impervious to viruses are the future. The rise of the machine-based business model is here. Expect to see a big jump in interest in algorithms, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and autonomy that contribute to keeping equipment working longer and harder without human supervision. In 2019, digital was viewed in the resources sector as a future, but not the future. Other possible futures, notably the status quo, still held sway. Once workers and bosses get used to teleworking, both will demand deeper digitalization of the work world. Expect to see more budget being applied to strengthen, expand, and evolve the digital foundations of the business. Which brings me to this pivotal question of this presentation. How are we going to pay for it? Fortunately, digital adoption can both lower cost and enable faster delivery than traditional industry technologies, so the dollar stretches further. But still, we need to find the dollar. That's more of a challenge today because cash flow has fallen with demand. And hence the question, how will we pay for it?